Welcome to another video and in this one we're going to take a look at adding some UI to our VR scene. Let's dive right in. So before we get started I just wanted to give a big shout out and some thank yous to my patrons who are Resmek Kubaik, Siobhan Poulter, William C. Tuttle, VR Anime Ted, Eli L, Blessing Odalai, Exodus, Harold Gunderson, David Blissett, Riflabin, and Adam. Thank you very much, and you guys rock. In our last lesson, we had a look at um, adding in our targets, and then when we shot them, um, we had a little mark to indicate to the player whereabouts on the target it had been hit, um, which is great. And we also had a look at adding in our game manager to our scene, which I think I'm actually in the wrong scene. Hang on a minute. There we go. So we added in our game manager. And it's only really just the, the starting, the foundation of this manager. And we're going to build on this as our game progresses over the coming weeks. And all our game manager currently does uh, is set up as a singleton, um, more for easy access than anything else. Uh, and it's just handling the score, which as we move forward, we'll probably put into a score manager class uh, and separate that out from our game manager. So we, add, we anyway, we added that game manager last week as well as do a little bit of tidy up in our hierarchy and get it prepared for um, adding more stuff and a little bit of organization. So this week I thought it makes sense if we started a little bit of UI work and thought about how we're going to allow the player to interact with the UI. Um, so I'm going to show you both ways and, and then you guys can use whichever way you want. So the first way we're going to show you is how you can use the XRA interactor. Um, on your hands to interact with the UI and click buttons and stuff. So currently this, the XR rig we have in the scene at the moment um, has the direct interact on it. So it's not going to actually interact with the UI. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and turn this off. And I'm going to create another XR rig, uh, which is going to be room scale. Let's hit enter and drag it up. And the reason I've done that is because it just makes it easier to show you with the ray interactors that come with the XR rig as default. So I'm going to go ahead and create a canvas. I'm going to make it world space and then we're just going to put it at zero, bringing the width down to about two meters by about one meter. And let's find it in the world. And Gizmo's on. Here you can see it just here. So. You don't want the UI to be too close to the player in VR, so it feels a bit weird. So we're going to move it so it's about three meters back. So say like three, so it's all the way back here inside our hut. And I'm just going to put some default text in there for a second. I'm going to put some text in there. Let's go ahead, go down to UI, text, text mesh pro. You might get this box asking you to import the TMP essentials. Go ahead and click that one. It's just going to import all the text mesh pro bits and pieces. Great. And you can see it's there, but it's massive. And we'll drop it to the same size as our canvas, so um, two by one. And then we'll make it a little bit smaller, just so we've got some text at the top. And we'll call this, just for a minute, just because we're just testing, we'll just call it main menu. And drop the font size right down to something like 0.1. And we'll just whack it in the center. So this is the start of our canvas. And, and also, let's go ahead and we'll just create a button, um, creating um, buttons just in the same way that you would do normally for any kind of UI. I'm going to go ahead and remove the text box. I'm just going to duplicate my text mesh pro object and put it in my button. Move it down, make it black like so. Let's just say this is our start button. Okay, so this is how you, you might want to do your UI using all the Unity default kind of stuff with the canvas and buttons. But to actually allow the if we were to play this now and try and interact with it with our ray interactors, it's not going to work. There's a couple of components we need to add on to um, some of our objects. So you'll see when we created our canvas, it's, it should have created the event system. Um, and on here, you've got the standalone input module. And it's asking you to replace with the input system your module. We don't actually want this and we don't want to click this button either. We're going to go ahead and remove it. And we're going to... Click on add component and add in the XR UI input module. Uh, and that's literally all we need for that. And then on our canvas, we want to add the tracked 
device graphic raycaster. And if you want to, you could always, always drop your event camera for your rig in your canvas there. That gets rid of that thing. So then when we um, go ahead and jump into you jump to UI, when we go ahead and jump into VR, and you'll be able to select the start button and it will listen for the activate trigger presses and you'll also see the line change when it's gone over a valid target so let's just fire up vr and try that one out so i just quickly tested that and my xr rig was miles away so i actually need to put that back at zero there we go and then when let's test it out now and go play we should be in the right place perfect and you'll see here i've got my controllers with um, my ray interactors on uh, and it's not hitting any valid objects, but as soon as I go over the start button on the UI, you can see it changes to white and I'm pressing the trigger on the controller and that's clicking the button effectively. So there from there, you would you could start your game. You can do that in a couple of ways. Maybe we could have like um, a method in the game manager that is the start game method so that when that button is pressed, it communicates with the game manager and says uh, the game has started, it turns off the UI and switches on your hands. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that very quickly just so you can see that in, in practice. So click on the game manager object and double click the game manager to open up in Visual Studio. Let's create a simple little method. We'll call it game start and we'll just return a, a debug to the console that we've started the game. Like so, and then back in Unity on that canvas, on that button, where we've got the on click event, we can add in our, we can click on the plus, drag in the game manager, go game manager, game start. That's that method we've just created there. So the second we click this button, it's gonna tell the game manager that we wanna start the game. And we could also tell the canvas once it's clicked, we can turn off that canvas because we no longer need it anymore. So we can say game object, set active all, but leave it unticked. So that when I play now, if you watch the console, just down here, in the bottom left, when I click on start, the canvas goes away, and we've got game started down at the bottom. So they've got that communication with the manager to let them know the game started. We could also do some funky things with our hands. So you could also start with your Ray interactors, or at least one of them. Let's say we want to control the UI with our right hand controller. So this is already set up here, this Ray interactor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to borrow that. Control D, I'm going to drag it into our XR rig that we've got set up from our previous lesson. We can remove this test one and I'll put that right hand controller in the camera offset. So effectively now I've got two right hands. I've got my right hand controller. Let's name these better for you so you can see. Let's call this one UI. Let's call this one shooting. So by default, we don't want to start the game with our shooting hand, so we can turn that one off and turn the UI controller one on. Uh, so we'll have our left hand controller, which has got a direct interactor on it, so we can pick things up. Although you could quite easily have the left hand controller as your ray interactor if you want to. And we've got two right hand controllers, one for our shooting, one for the UI. So when you click the button, you could do this in either the game manager or you, we, for now we could just use the, the button on click event, turn off our right hand controller UI game object. We can just say game object set active ball, let's turn it off. And we could turn on our right hand controller, which is our shooting hand. We say game object set active ball and turn it on. So let's go there and let's test that one out. So I should have my, turn the rig on, here we go. Go ahead and hit play. So you, this, so you see here, I've got my um, hand animating away. We haven't linked up the hand for this one yet. This is just our Ray Interactor for the UI. Um, so as soon as I press start, and why isn't that working? I know because on our event system, we on our canvas, we need to um, put our camera back in. Um, so we're just dragging the camera from our new rig, and then that will hook up with the event system again. There we go. So got my left hand and I click on here, got my hands back. Oh, and I'm now able to pick up the gun and shoot targets. But the game has started. 
that's one approach you could take to creating your UI. Um, one thing I like though is we've got the gun in the scene already from the start. So what we could do is actually have the user shoot a start button, um, which then kind of indicates to them like how it's like a mini tutorial if you like, because it teaches them that they need to pick up the gun and that's going to be their method for interacting with the scene. And it makes it a little bit more interesting as well that you're actually um, affecting stuff in the scene with with some of the, the virtual props. So we can use our gun to shoot a target, which is effectively our start button. And then that tells the game managers to, to start the game. So let's have a look at wiring that up. So I'm going to keep the UI that we've just made. And instead of having a start button, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create a cube. And this is going to be the target that we shoot to start the game. Let's try and get that in a good position. Just like that. That might be confusing. I'm just going to turn off the target we've got in the back. So we've got this is will be effectively be our menu. And if we duplicate this text, maybe we could say here, shoot target to start. Let's just drop that font size down. So you can see this cube already comes with a collider on and, and that's great. Um, and we do, we, in a previous lesson, we wrote our target script, our target controller script. Um, I'll just quickly assign that there. And you can see that this has a target shot method because it inherits from iTarget interface. So we could use this to fire off everything we need to do. So, so let's go to our scripts folder. And we're going to create another folder in here. We're going to create a folder for our UI scripts and we're going to create a C sharp class and we're going to call this start UI. Now, as we go on, we might actually make a UI manager because that would be perfectly reasonable and we could communicate with that for the sake of this tutorial. Let's going to keep it simple and just create this little class for a second to show you how this is going to work. So we've got this start, start UI, start UI class, which is going to control that little target and this is going to inherit from that target interface we created and you can put that next to mono behavior you see it's going to go red and that's because we haven't implemented the interface in this class yet so you can hover your mouse over the little squiggly line control and full stop and go implement interface we'll remove our start and update functions and um, i'm going to copy the target shot i'm going to put it to the top just so make it easier to read and we don't need these for a second, the animation, but we, we may well have a start animation. So um, this might be to do. I'll take out this one as well for the audio. And you probably would have some audio on here, like the start menu being shot. But we'll do that at another time. This is just showing how we're going to hook up um, our 3D object to work with the UI. So we could say that when the target has been shot, we can get our game manager get the instance of that and we want to call our method which was the game start like so so that uh, as soon as we shoot this um, object it's going to tell the game manager the game has started accessing this function here in the game manager and then we can go ahead and turn off this um, this game object so we can say this dot game object dot set active to false to give the impression it, we've shot it and it's gone away. So this is really showing off the kind of the power of that interface that we built for our targets because it's actually going to work across uh, a couple of our systems. So let's make sure that our cube, which is called R, for some weird reason, I'm going to call this game start cube. So as soon as we shoot this game start cube, I'm going to make the canvas a child of that game object. If you remember when we sh when we are adding our start UI script to this game object, it's going to turn off the cube and it also needs to turn off the canvas. That's why I made it a child. So drag our new start UI script onto our game start cube. Uh, and you see it's gone on there as a component. So now when we shoot it with our gun, um, it's going to disappear. But if you remember, there's one thing we need to do um, on our game start cube when we're shooting with our gun it's looking for a specific layer 
to um, check against four collisions. And that layer was the target layer. So we need to make sure that our game start cube is on our target layer. So when our gun hits it, it knows that it's a valid target. And we say, yes, change children. So now let's give that a whirl. Let's go and hit play. I've still got my ray interactors on. I can turn that off now because we're no longer interacting with our UI through a ray interactor. We're doing it through our gun. So we're going to turn that one back on. Got my gun. Shooting away. And then when we shoot the target to start a game, off we go. As you can see there, it's lifted a little red target for it to indicate to the user that we've um, hit a target and to show whereabouts we've hit it. We don't want it to show on this particular object. So let's take a look at fixing that. So that worked great. When we shot our target, it closed everything it needed to do. It communicated with the game manager. And the game has started and then things would go on from there, which we'll look in in the next few weeks. Um, let's go ahead and look at that little red dot. So let's take a look at stopping our gun from generating uh, a little cross on this object when we shoot it to start because we don't want to that leave that behind in the scene and um, once we start playing uh, and the way that's done is where in our gun we have our gun script if you go ahead and click on that you can see here that the, the gun is ray casted and shot and then it's going to fire this method create hit graphic on target where we're creating and instantiating that hit graphic and placing it where the user has hit the target so what we can do is check in with the game manager to see whether we are allowed to create a target yet or not. Um, so in our game manager here, in this class, the game manager class, let's create another, another ball that's a true or false. Can I create a target visual? So we can say, we make this one private initially. So private ball should create target graphic. That's a rubbish name. Should create hit graphic, let's call that. Bit of a long name, but at least we know what it is. Should create hit graphic, and we're going to set it to false because initially we don't want to. And then we'll create a property to get and set this from a different class. So we can say public all should create hit graphic, but with a capital S. And we can get that. So we want to return should create hit graphic. We need to return in front of that and semicolon at the end. So all we want to do is just create the get because we just want to see what the value of should create hit graphic is from a different class. So in, once we've shot the target, we're going to check in with should create hit graphic. So back in our gun script, just before we go and create the graphic, that little red dot, let's ask the game manager if we're allowed to. So we can say if game manager dot instance, and this is where making it singleton has given us easy access to that particular game manager. The game manager dot instance dot should create hit graphic. So this is saying that this is going to return either a, a true or false, but because we've put it inside an, an if statement here, and we're asking that if the game manager instance is true, that this is what this is going to um, equate to at the moment. It's going to check to see if it's true. We only want to perform what's inside our if statement if the should create hit graphic is false. So we need to ask if this value is false and we could say equals equals false like that. And that's perfectly valid. Um, or we can do something a bit shorter and just put in an exclamation mark in front of the game manager. So this is asking if the game manager instance should create hit graphic is false and do stuff here. So if the value is false and we don't want to create a hit target, well then we can exit out of this method. We no longer need to be in it because all we're doing after it is creating a hit graphic. Um, so we can just jump straight out. So if the game manager instance should create hit graphic is false, then we don't want to create a hit visual. So we're going to jump out of this method. Let's go ahead and save that. That's great. So then um, all this code isn't going to run unless this value is true. But at the moment, it's always going to be false because we've specified that it, um, it is false when we've declared that ball. We actually need to tell it that once the game has started, it can create those little visuals. So where we've got our game start method inside our game manager, we can say should create hit graphic is now true. And that's that. Let's give that a test. Um, oh, God, it's killed the microphone. 
And then when you shoot the target at the back, you can see it's not making those little red dots. Um, so when I shoot the target to start, now something's going to happen here. Uh, and that's okay, because I wanted to talk to you about why it's happening. So we're going to shoot this target. And you can see it leaves a little red square, which is our target marker on that object. Um, but now when we shoot the cube at the back, you can see it's leaving our targets behind. So uh, what we've done is kind of worked, but that shouldn't be there. Um, and that's due to the way um, code is executed and the order in which it does tasks. So let's just jump back into our scripts because we're going to need to tweak a couple of things. So back in Visual Studio, ooh, that's very close. Back in Visual Studio, what's actually happening is when we're firing our gun and we're checking in with our game manager to see whether we can create a hit graphic, um, it's, it's saying that we can. Uh, and it's creating that graphic when we shoot our start marker or start target. And the reason for that is when we shoot, um, we're checking to see whether the object we've shot has um, the target shot method on it, which it does. It's our start UI, it's inheriting from the interface. And the second we shoot that, it goes from our gun script, checking it's got the method on it, it goes to that object, which there's the method just there. And it's asking the game manager to start, so it goes to the game manager, and it sets should create hit graphic to true. And then, then this runs, and um, it, it this value is, is effectively true at this point, so it's going to create a hit graphic. So that's the, that's like the order in which it's, it's happening. Um, so we just need to kind of control that flow a little bit, and there's a couple of things we can do. But I know because of the way I'm thinking about like creating this game is that once you shoot the start target, we don't want the game to instantly start going. So we're going to introduce like a little delay in there. Uh, so in our start UI script, rather than call the game manager to say start the game, as soon as the target is shot, I'm going to remove that line uh, and we're going to remove, we don't want to turn it off straight away. What we are going to do is create a little bit of a pause. And as soon as the target's shot, we're going to wait a couple of seconds and then start the game. So we're going to create a method in our start UI class. And this is simply going to be called start game. And inside start game, that's when we want to call the game manager to say game start. And then we can turn off our canvas. But in order for this start game method to run, we need to we need to call it somewhere. We're going to do that the second our target is shot. And we're going to use the invoke because we can control the time when that method is fired. So we could say invoke and then we're going to give it, you need to pass it here. See the method name is a string. So we're going to need our speech marks and we're going to say start game. And let's call it say after three seconds. So we'll shoot the target and then go one, two, three, and then this method will fire. And by this point, as soon as um, this target is shot, our game manager should create hit graphic. All is still going to be false, so it's not going to generate as soon as we shoot our, a hit target. But let's create a bit of a visual back in Unity on that menu just so we know what's happening. So we'll close this down. That's going to do a little bit of compiling. And our game start cube, let's have some more text, duplicate that one, control D, and we can just say for now, get ready, let's turn it off. So in our game start cube, we can extend our class a little bit. Let's add a couple of variables, and these can be private, but we need to see them in inspector, so we use serialized field. And these could just be game objects. Actually, rather than game objects, let's actually get hold, of, let's change the text in the text mesh pro object. So we're gonna need to say up here using TM pro, the namespace for the text mesh pro stuff. So then we need to change that serialized field. So rather than actually access two different game objects and toggle them on and off, let's think about it a bit smarter. Let's use the text object we've already got. So we want to add a text mesh pro U GUI, and we'll call this UI text. And then as soon as we've shot the target, we can change that text. And what it currently says is shoot the target to start. So we'll change it to get ready. So UI text is going to be then dot text is equal to, let's say, 
Get ready. And we'll change all this um, as we move forward and make it all a, a lot neater. But this this just shows the flow and gets it all laid out initially. And that's a lot of the times the way you can approach coding. Coding your, your scripts are going to evolve as time goes on. And you find better ways to do things, and that's all about refactoring, and um, that's all part of it. So let's go ahead and double check our work and make sure it's all working as we are expecting. So before we hit play, let's go ahead and drag in that text. So where we've got shoot target to start, let's drag that text into our start UI script. This is what we're going to need to change. Let's have a look. I've got the gun. It's not making any of the targets. So we're checking that game manager ball to see if we are allowed to put the red marker on stuff. We're not allowed. So we shoot our target to start. Let's get ready. And now the game is off. So adding that little invoke there with a little bit of time delay just gets around the order in which the script's executing and controlling that ball value for allowing us to shoot on the targets. And you can tidy this up further. So we can have here a UI section. You move that above our lighting and put our game start cube here. Save. And then we've got a nice flow in the hierarchy. So for this method, we are using our guns to actually start the game and control some of the UI elements. And on this cube, we've got our start UI script which all we're doing is we use, we're leveraging our interface for this that we created when we made our targets. So that when the target is shot, we are getting hold of the text object and we are saying, get ready. And then we're, after three seconds, we're going to invoke our start game, which is going to access the game manager and say that the game can start. And we're also turning off the, this canvas. And then the game start and the game manager we're then controlling whether the hit graphic should be shown. And then we'll add in more as we go through the next couple of weeks. And our gun script, all that's doing is double checking with the game manager that we're allowed to create a hit graphic. Uh, and if we're not, then it's just going to return and not do any more of this method. Um, but if we can create a hit graphic, then it's going to pass on down the create hit graphic on target and then do all the stuff we did last week but hopefully that's shown you just how rather than using um, the ray interactors to interact with UI what you can actually use props like the gun to do the same thing but in a more kind of engaging and fun way as opposed to like clicking and highlighting things which you could quite easily do for like a little mini menu um, but I think to actually start the game gives them a little bit of an introduction into how the controls are working before they go into the actual gameplay. So in next week's video, what we'll do is we'll build upon what we've got here and we'll actually start our game loop. Um, so from start to finish, how the game's going to kind of run. So once you shoot this target to start the game, start a timer. And as soon as that timer is finished, it then either like displays your result and your score and your top score or it it'll do some other stuff, but we'll get that flow going. So then all we need to do is populate it with content and our game is nearly there. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching the video. If this has been helpful for you and you're liking this tutorial series, then please leave a like. It really helped me out. I'll see you in the next week's video. Bye for now.